Hello scholars, thanks for tuning in. Let's take a look at something called the Law of Conservation of Energy. So take out your concept catalog. This will be the next thing that we enter. Conservation of... We're going to put in parentheses mechanical energy. So this is a very important law in science. Helps us understand all sorts of things from involved in physics and chemistry and biology. It has an equation that looks like this. Let's use red for that. Potential energy plus kinetic energy initial equals potential energy plus kinetic energy final. When we talk about potential energy I mean, when we talk about mechanical energy, we are referring to PE plus KE, the sum of those two. Now, this equation, this can be um, also written as MGH, because that's what potential energy is, plus kinetic energy, which is calculated one half mv squared initial, equals MGH plus one half mv squared final. All I did here was do a little substitution, PE to MGH, KE to one half MB squared. Okay, now as far as the units go, that's pretty simple. Potential energy is measured in joules, kinetic energy is measured in joules, and but same thing for the after part. So the units for all this is just joules. A little reminder there, units in black. Okay, but we're going to take a look at an example. So um, check out, yeah, let's go to another page here. All right, so let's take a look at an example. For our example, we are going to consider a piece of ice sitting at the top of a ramp. And the ramp, let's make it 0 0.5 meters tall. We can call that H. And let's draw in the piece of ice sitting at the top. And the ice. And let's make the mass of this ice equal to 0 0.1 kilogram. And um, let's make for our example um, what is the. Uh, kinetic energy of the ice at the bottom of the ramp. If it is released from rest. So we're not pushing it, we're just simply dropping it. And um, we can also mention that friction, because it is ice, and ice is very slippery, we can say friction is negligible, which means small enough to be ignored. All right, so um, as far as the equation goes, we can use the equation that we wrote down up above. Actually, let's keep it this all in green. So um, go back to green, PE plus KE at the initial, which would also mean at the top in this case, equals potential energy plus kinetic energy at the bottom. So what we're saying here is that there is no overall change in the amount of energy. It's just going to shift between being potential or kinetic. All right, let's analyze the information that we're given here. We, um, we see that it is from rest. So from that we know the initial velocity is zero. And from that we know that the initial kinetic energy is zero. So let's make that zero right there. And um, we're being asked to calculate the kinetic energy down here at the bottom. So here we have um, kinetic energy at the bottom. We're going to put that as a question mark, and that is what we're trying to solve for. 
but we will need to know also the potential energy at the bottom. So let's draw the ice sitting there at the bottom. And what is the potential energy at the bottom? Since its height is zero, its potential energy will be zero. So we can put in a zero for that. And, um, oops, wrong one. Step back. That's not zero. Hopefully you caught that mistake. This is where the zero goes, the final potential energy. And for the potential energy at the top, we know it's going to be mgh. So we can multiply 0 0.1 kilogram times 9.8 meters per second square times the height of 0 0.5 meters. Let's clean this up a little bit here. 0 0.1 kilograms. Okay, so when we multiply those three numbers together, um, 0 0.1 times 9.8 is 0.98. Take half of that, that would be 0.49. And that's going to be joules plus zero kinetic energy before equals zero potential energy after plus our unknown kinetic energy after. And so as you can see, we can ignore these zeros. And so the kinetic energy after is going to be 0 0.49 joules equals KEF. And that is our answer for that. So if you look back on this, the answer really became that the potential energy initial became equal to the kinetic energy final. As it rolled down along here, the PE converted into KE. Let's take a look at part B of this. So let's take a, take a look at um, part two of this. Can we figure out what is the speed of the ice at the bottom? You might think that we're going to need some fancy equations that involve acceleration, time, and that sort of thing. But actually, it's a lot easier than that. So um, once we know that the kinetic energy uh, let's write down what we, what we do know. We know the kinetic energy of it. Kinetic energy we just figured out is 0 0.49 joules. Um, we know the potential energy at the, at the bottom is 0. What else do we know about it? We know the mass is 0 0.1 kilogram. Um, what else do we know? We know the height is 0 0.5 meters. And we know we're trying to find the velocity. So which of these do we need? If we look at our equations, we know that kinetic energy equals one-half mv square. So it looks like we mostly need to know the mass and the kinetic energy. And then we can solve for the velocity. So um, let's plug in our values here. Kinetic energy is 0 0.49 joules. And that equals one-half times the mass is 0 0.1 kilogram times v squared. And uh, let's do a little simplification here. 0 0.49 on the left, 1 half of 0 0.1 is 0 0.05 v squared. To solve for v squared, we first need to divide both sides by the 0 0.05. That will cancel out. And 0.49 divided by 0 0.05. Well, 0.49 divided by 0.5 would be essentially 0.49 times 2, that would be 0.98, but we're dividing by 0.05, so that would be 9.8. So, you know, we should probably check that what the calculator is, 0.49 divided by 0.05, or did I mess up my math? Let's see here. 0.49 divided by 0.05 is 9.8, and this is equal to velocity squared. No, that's not the same as velocity. So we have one more additional step to get just v. We have to square root, because the square root of v square is v. So now the square root of 9.8, that I definitely cannot do in my head, is 3.1 meters per second. So that's going to be the speed at the bottom. Um, and uh, so... That's a pretty elegant way to do it. We didn't have to deal with trying to figure out how fast it was accelerating. We didn't need to have to figure out uh, how much time it was accelerating for. All we did was using 
how much kinetic energy it has to solve for that. So that last example actually brings up a really useful way of solving for the velocity when something is falling. And it comes back to our equation that we have above. PE plus KE initial, or we might say at the top if it's falling, equals PE plus KE final at the bottom. So this would be, um, this is leading us to another equation here. Uh, kinetic energy at initial, um, let's put it here for a falling object. Or falling object. All right. So um, release from rest. So the kinetic energy is zero. Potential energy at the end is zero. So what this equation boils down to is PE initial equals KE final. And let's just put a little diagram with that here. Falling object velocity. Here it is on impact. And uh, here we have PE and KE initial. Here we have PE and KE final. We can add a little initials there. Final, final. And potential energy, the initial is always going to be MGH. Kinetic energy initial, if it's being released from rest, we can say it's zero. Potential energy final is always going to be zero because it's at the ground. Kinetic energy final is going to be one half mv square. So that leads us to this equation here: that potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final. So we have mgh equals one half mv square. Notice that we can divide both sides by m. How awesome! We don't even have to think about mass. Now we have gh equals one-half v square. And we can go through some similar steps to solve for v square. We can multiply both sides by two. One-half and the two cancel out. Now we have v square equals two gh. And then we had to just do the square root of both sides. So now we have v equals square root of two gh. This equation, you should put a box around because it can be used for falling for objects falling from rest. Alrighty. Um, notice how the mass of it canceled out, which Galileo would like to see that because he's the one who first proposed that the speed of a falling object does not depend on its mass. What it does depend on, according to this equation, is how strong gravity is and also the, um, the height that the object is starting from. Okay, so um, we're going to be using this for some practice ones uh, in the next couple of days. But you uh, can also, you can see that we could use this equation as it is, going back to that last problem. Let's just do that, um, revisit that last example we did. If we plug in here, square root of 2 times 9.8 meters per second square times the height was 0 0.5 meters. This is our ice problem again then what does that come to? Uh, 2 times 9.8 um, 2 times 9.8 is 19.6 times 0.5 this is becomes the square root of 9.8 which we already know is 3.1 meters per second and that's equal to the V so it works um, okay I'm gonna stop there and I'll see you in class